a lyrical lashing where insults turn into wordplay. After the strike, you strike again. We go inside the world of battle rap. The acapella sport, the artistry. Fox 5 exclusive with two of the biggest names in the game. One of the biggest and the best battle rappers in the entire culture. Battle Rap with Vada Fly and Showtime SP. Friday on the 5 o'clock news. Hey, straight up out Atlanta, we make careers out of truck yeah, shit. Sorry, like shit. a piss and mashes, we focus on making packs. Yeah. Look, miss me with that cap yeah. shit, we dope pedal. Hey, I swear trapping was a sport, I win a gold medal. Third place, bitch, I feel like you Usain. Yeah. Black and yellow Glock 9 on me, I call it Wu-Tang. Old dirty bastard yeah. dumping dick inside. You already know what it is, man. Salute to the subscribers, that notification game, etc., etc. Don't let none of that get too far ahead of you. You know who I be. Follow me on IG, Vada underscore Fly. Tell your mama I said hi. Salute to every single one of y'all. I did drop the instructions on how to watch myself and Showtime SP later on Fox 5 NY. I appreciate all the love, all the support, all the talk, you know what I'm saying, things like that. But I just want to work. Like, literally, I just want to work. That's my thing. Like, I, I appreciate all of that. But my main thing is always the main thing. And there's, I got a couple things I want to talk about today. So I'm just kind of like, just put it all in one, you know what I mean? Put all the subjects out there. It's just so much going on. It's hard. It's hard to keep up with all the bullshit, all the bars, you know what I'm saying? All of the bars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rap something. Vada, rap something. what they say? Uh, they say I rap commercial. Why? Because I really had a commercial. Uh, I'm wheeling back in reversal. The mean lean back in the seats, laughing the purple. Shit. I've been avoiding you haters. They say there's no such thing as a bad shot as long as you make it. I'm walking through paper while I argue with neighbors. I had to rebuild my team like LeBron with the Lakers. I keep the Ruger grip tough. I'm used to quick bucks. I know the word both ways in case my pupils slip, but I can't even do that. I could really go crazy, but I'm not even gonna do that today. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a great feeling, and I really appreciate that. But, yo, the intro song. I like my man on the record, because y'all be giving me hell about the record sometimes and who's who said what and why is this person being played I definitely like and I was listening to my man Big A Prado ODB his record was actually kinda dope you know what I'm saying and we are gonna be taking some more promo things like that hit me up on Twitter hit me up on Instagram price went up the price went up it did I'm sorry it's not the same you know they say it's just media right this watch is starting to look like a media right I make you turn your head left, you see media, right? You ever try to compare media, right? But uh, I got a thousand bars. I might, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna do some, a project, you know what I'm saying, for the people that really want to hear me rap, because I be playing around with the rap sometimes. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop something. Fuck, it. fuck. Why not? Why not? Might as well, right? Speaking of drop something, man. <laughs> Yo, did y'all see Smack's interview last night on the Dancer Project? Y'all might need to go see his interview there. First of all, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that were said in this interview. Now, if you know, Smack White don't really do a lot of interviews, you know? And if he do, when he do them with like Hip Hop Is Real and 15 Minutes of Fame and shit like that, they don't really be long, they be short. Like, he'll talk about what's going on, completing the objective, the next card, yada, yada, yada. But it's never really, and I, I don't think, I don't think I've ever seen Smack in an interview where, uh, there's like a live stream and they're like taking questions and shit like that. A lot of the interviews, when URL does interviews, they usually be with certain people, certain platforms, and they know it's not gonna go too far, it's not gonna get too edgy. Nobody's really gonna be challenging them on anything that's going on out here. And you know, I'm not knocking how anybody does their interviews, because you know say Everybody don't wanna interview everybody, and there's nothing wrong with that. They can go where they want, choose the platforms they wanna interview on, but without no hate involved, this has not been URL's best year. It's all I'm gonna say, I don't wanna go into specific events, what's been going on. It has not been their best year by their standards. They used to be in the number one league, being far ahead and beyond everybody. They're not used to the public backlash. They're not used to vitriol. They're not used to having artists walk off their platform. And now it's a lot going on with a lot of these artists. And I wanna talk, and I'm gonna get down to like different subjects. I got a couple things I wanna talk about. And I'm gonna end it with uh, Remy Ma's Chrome 23. I got my homegirl Nikki Knowledge. She dropped the predictions and shit like that. I'm gonna put them in here. Just, just, just let's hop in the car. You know what I'm saying? I just said, you know what I'm saying? What I said, I really rap commercial. I said I, I'm, I'm leaning back and I'm wheeling the seats, laughing the purple. Like we're just hop in the car. We riding. We gonna ride out. Let's just go, man. So, um, you know, I watched the interview 
And I see the comments coming in and people are asking different questions. You know, there's a lot of people that support you all because a lot of you all has a lot of support. I personally want to see you all do good because good battles equals good recaps, which equals good content, which keeps the algorithm moving. So it's like I, when people be like, oh, y'all be, hey, y'all want to see you all. No, 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 no. Oh, hey, hey. I told y'all before, we ain't never that mad. I don't care what you all has done to as far as like different this and that and this, all these little political shits, that their wars are not my war to fight, which is the reason why when an artist has an issue with URL, I'll talk about the artist side, I'll talk about the URL side, I'll talk about my perspective. I don't care. I do not care. I tell you all the time, it does not matter. I don't get involved because at the end of the day, my bottom line is my bottom line, taking care of my family, Showtime SP, and everybody that's in my circumference. You can't really think, like, I gotta be affiliated with them, or I gotta be cool with them, because guess what? When it's advantageous to the organization, they're always gonna do what's best for them. And if what's best for them does not include you, that's what's gonna be done. And I learned that a long time ago. So you gotta kinda remove your personal feelings when you're involved in this, because at the end of the day, you'll think that somebody has your best interest. Like, I'll give you a prime example. And salute to Chris, he spoke about this the other day. You will be putting in super work thinking that you valid with a league, trying to make your name, trying to come up and things like that. Like if you're a blogger or if you're media and you'll be working, 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 you'll get to an event and they won't even let you in. And then you'll see eight random people roll up with like a Queens flip or like one of the guys that just, that just be around to be around and they walk straight in the door. And that lets you know where you stand. Like, yo, they don't really fuck with me like that. So when you get to that point, it's like, you know what? I'm gonna just do me. And once you remove all of the affiliations and wanting to be cool and get along to get along and be in the in crowd, shit just turns out way better. Like for me, you know, it's just way better this way. So it's like if something happens there, bam, I'm gonna talk about it. If something happens there, bam, I'm gonna talk about it. They both reply, bam, bam. And we covering all things. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? And then Norbs had an interview too. He was on uh, the one platform. I don't really fuck with them niggas over there, so I ain't really gonna. Like he had an interview. He just, he. Let's just say it like that. He had an interview. I'm not playing none of the clips because them niggas will flag your channel, will take your shit down. So if you want to go, just look, just go Google Norbs, Tay Rock, Sue Surf, and that shit will pop up. I ain't even shouting niggas out or nothing like that because they be moving on some bozo shit. So I, I'm good. But uh, yeah, so Smack has this interview with the Danza Project and salute to the Danza Project and everything that they got going on. Uh, and they really was asking, you know, some light questions at first, and the guys was trying to like help and said, yo, we're not here to talk about contracts, and yo, we're not here to talk about nobody's business. I get it, Danza Project. You might not be from around here. You might not be doing this one. You might be new here. But since you're new here, and what you do, I think they said you had an interview with Conceited, so I love the, the work, the camera work, and all that stuff. That's what the fans want to know about. The fans want to know, they've been talking about this shit the last 40 days. I know y'all probably wasn't around when Easy accepted the battle with Hitman. URL was trying to block the shit. They said it was gonna make them look soft. You, you, y'all was not involved, so I understand that y'all don't understand every aspect of what the people are asking. While all the comments are asking about contracts and easy and yada yada, because you're not really involved with what's going on here like that. You're doing your thing, but y'all not. You know what I'm saying? You, you get it. So anyway, um, so. They're not, they're, they're kind of avoiding like the really, really crazy questions, you know what I'm saying, about why y'all blocking battles, why y'all making niggas get off cards and things like that. And shout out to Zeus. Zeus, if you don't know Zeus, he be in a lot of live chats. Uh, I've seen him in Easy's joints. I've seen him in a lot of different conversation pieces where, you know, he'll drop a $100 uh, super chat and you can't avoid that. Like, yeah, can that, that was the reason why I couldn't understand why they left him susceptible to be part of a live chat. And I understand when you go live, it's for the viewers, it's for the viewership, it's to do your numbers, and now they got smack in the building, they got more people than they ever had on their live stream. And bruh, Zeus asked for a hundred dollars. So, but if everyone's business is confidential, then why show Easy's contract? But let's keep it strategic. How you feel about rehearsal battles on your league? How do you feel about battlers backing out 48 hours? Why not bridge the gap to push the culture? I seen that, I said, oh my God. I said, oh shit. <laughs> I said, yo, he gonna have to, he gonna have to ask him this question because it's 100 in the back of my mind. I started coaching him. Anytime now, Austin should be approaching him. <laughs> he should take that angle and smack him that way in my head. I started coaching him. <laughs> I said, you should take this angle, start approaching. I said, get these niggas. I want to hear it. Smack was hot. 
son. What? No, I'm saying, son, I ain't He says, okay. salute. He said, if everyone's business is confidential, why'd you show Easy's contract? I ain't show Easy's contract. What are you talking about? Talk what you know. I ain't show shit. He said, how you feel about rehearsal battles on the league? How you feel about battlers backing out 48 hours before? I don't, listen, man. I don't, I don't have those problems. I'm not, like, you know what I'm saying? You know, it is what it is. Like, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, business is business. And, you know, you got to do business with good people. Fuck, you know what to talk about? He started going bananas. I couldn't believe it. I never seen Smack flustered like this because nigga asked him straight up, "What do you think? <laughs> Why did y'all show?" But they didn't show Easy's contract per se. They just showed the legal jargon that was a reply to Easy shit and basically revealed the 360 deal that they was having this nigga on. Ain't nobody gonna tell me signing with a league for six years without no guaranteed money is not a slave deal. That shit is crazy. Like, you don't even, I said, y'all niggas don't even know if y'all gonna be alive in six years. Why are you signing six years of your life away? Most people watching this are gonna be damn near 40 or over 40 or damn near 50 in six years. You was wilding for that. So I told her, I said it before, easy. I would've never signed that contract. Ain't no mother, ain't no goddamn way I would've signed that contract, no. So he answered it, uh, but he was very flustered. Uh, I never seen, <laughs> I haven't seen Smack that, man. But he did explain, you know, why he doesn't go back and forth with people, you know what I'm saying? And it's not the internet, you know, I don't, we don't, we, 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 we do this thing, but we don't reply. So that's why most of the people on URL, when people go at them, they don't reply because they got this whole internal thing where we don't reply on the internet, we don't reply on the internet. I mean, they do other goofy shit on the internet, but they don't reply on the internet. So anyway, um, so interview is like almost two hours long. If you got the time, you can go over there, watch it, support them fellas. I watched it, but I couldn't, I, 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 when I got there, my man, whoever it was, sent me the link. And I started watching it, and I watched it to the end. I tried to go back to the beginning, but I, I, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I got through like five, ten minutes, and I was like, I'm good. The parts that I needed to hear, I definitely heard. Uh, he was based, Smag is basically like his business is business, the business, you know, the business, the business, the business. It always refers back to the business. It's not even like family or not, like, not even like, like, you know, it's just business. Everything is business. And because when people talk about block battles, it's like, yeah, Swamp got blocked off of uh, off of the trenches card, but Swamp definitely got blocked off of uh, off of Riot's card. And they, and they and like Chris said, they fuck with Gichi Gotti way more than they fuck with Easy, and they blocked him off of that card too. So this is, battles being blocked and all of that is not nothing new. It's a it's been a thing that's happening. Do I like it? No. Do I think it should be? No. I don't care about that shit because there's nothing wrong. Like to me personally, but I'm not involved in their business. But I don't see an issue with Hitman. And easy going to get a quick bag and coming back across the street. They did. They they did to a point where they damn near don't even want. To, they blacklist the nigga. Like they 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 look at him as the top op, number one op because of the shit that he did. But you know, it is what it is. So, um, moving along, and this is all in a weekly. This is like a wrap up of everything that happened this week. So that was Smack's interview to Dance the Project. You can go over there and watch that. Salute to them, Jack Boy Man. <sighs> Shout out to Jack Boy Maine and everything that he's got going on. I like Jack Boy Maine. I like his style. I, you know, it's, it, it, some people love what he does, other people don't. He's a huge representative of the DMV. Whenever I see him, I got love for Jack Boy Maine. I knew Jack Boy Maine back when he first started. He can attest and tell you the same thing. I remember Jack Boy Maine like way, way, way back. You heard about to the herd bow in the back of his mouth. I've always been a supporter of him. I've seen his rise. Um, I saw him versus John John. I've seen him go up and down and up and down. So Jack is like. A cousin of mine, like I really fuck with Jack. I, I know him like from battle rap, and I've seen him multiple times. I actually seen him not too long ago at Easy versus Big T event. So please, I'm gonna say that beforehand. You know what I'm saying I got to put the preface out. You backed out of two battles in the same day or in the same two days, like you. <laughs> now normally I wouldn't even be talking about this. You know what I'm saying? Because one is on We Go Hard, and the other one was on the, the True Foe shit in Chicago. So I'm like, yo, y'all did all of that hype, all of that promotion, all of that everything just for you to back out of two battles in two days, my nigga. And you said, Debo, you listen. All right. So Debo, I rock with Debo, and you know what I'm saying? I don't got, we both in the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx like you, my nigga. Woop -de -woop -de -woop. I get it, I get it, I get it. But listen, my nigga. If you managing someone, right? If you're managing someone, and it's advantageous for them to back out of the battles now. Well, why the fuck did you book them? Ask yourself that. Atlanta, 
and you're online, you, oh, you're online, you know, you're playing security for URL, cybersecurity. I see you all in the comments going back and forth, people, yada, yada, yada. You said something the other day when I was saying, you know, it took me and SP to get to uh, this level. Of course, it took my supporters too, but you know, them, these leagues ain't fuck with me. We wasn't endorsed. Them niggas ain't put us on. Them niggas ain't give us no nothing. We earned this shit out the mud. So when you said that, I'm looking at you like, why are you even here commenting? I know you're URL cybersecurity, but my nigga, this is my moment right now. Like, I don't give a fuck about nothing these niggas got going on over there. I've been told y'all that. All I need you to do is put out battles. Put out battles. And ain't you, you're supposed to be a league owner. You're supposed to be a league owner, my nigga. Like, this shit is crazy. What the fuck is going on with Queen of the Ring? That's not a league no more. If you want to sell it, or you want you know what I'm saying, y'all want to get it off. We can do like the NBA. You know, Jordan just sold the Charlotte Hornets, right? You could sell Queen of the Ring to some niggas that'll get that shit running and get it running right because quite obviously you're not even running the league right now. Like, what the fuck you got going on? You should not be on Twitter. I seen you the other day, you was on there arguing with gyms and you was on the other day going back and forth with this person, back and forth with that person. But for what, my nigga? Like, you not gonna see no other league owners doing this. Organic is not doing this. ARP not even gonna be online going back and forth with everybody in the comments just because they burning niggas down because of bad practices and 360 deals. Come on, my nigga. Like, if they not, and here's the last thing about it, and I fuck with D-Boy, and it's not no, no, no big shit, but I'm just saying, if these niggas is not even out there going to war and bam, bam, bam it for themselves, why are you doing it? Beasley's not doing this. Smack just said we got the no response policy. We don't talk back and forth people, but you out here playing cybersecurity for these niggas. You got to stop that shit. You got to focus on Queen of the Ring and on the artists that you manage. So you got Jack Boy made in the back out of two battles, and now he looks crazy as hell. And the reason why I'm even talking about this is because it's Troy Martin. Now, I don't talk to Troy Martin every day. I don't got no beef with Troy Martin. That's my brother. I fuck with him. He's from the Bronx like me. He's from Gun Hill Row. I'm from 233rd, which is less than a mile. You know the distance. You got this man, his birthday event, on We Go Hard. Jack Boy made supposed to battle Prezi, Presidential Dubs, or whatever the case may be. And you having him back out, he's a major part of that card. I didn't even see the card, and I know he's a major part of that card. We Go Hard don't get no big artists that, that come down there every fucking time. When they get a mid-tier artist, this is big for them. Shout out to Steam. Shout out to Chess. Shout out to everybody that came from the We Go Hard army. I'm from New York. I know how it works. But Troy Martin is one of us. I don't give a fuck how big y'all niggas feel he is, how small, whatever the case may be, but he is one of us. And when I say he's one of us, he's another black man that's involved in battle rap and the battle rap culture, pushing this shit forward. Troy Martin was doing this shit before I was. I always got love and respect for Troy Martin. And to see that you would facilitate an artist bagging off his fucking card within the last two days, dog, like, that's, that's basically saying fuck Troy Martin, fuck B-City, fuck everything we go hard got going on over there. You calling over there to, to, to have him out the battle. And I seen Jack Boy made in an interview and respect to him and everything that he got going on. But I'm like, if you got time to do an interview, you got time to call a nigga and tell him that you're not going to come to the fucking battle. Like, I just don't understand. Why are y'all accepting? And that's the thing, like I said. My thing is, why are you accepting it if you're going to back out of it? And then the Chicago shit is even crazier. You niggas start a whole mid-Atlantic rivalry with these niggas. 80s and Piranha and this and that. Y'all got all of this hype and shit building. Now you're off the card. I'm good. I'm hey, yo, what the fuck? And I heard who you got. I'm not going to say who you got. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going there. But it's like, for that? That's not even worth Like, come on, fam. And, and with, all of this shit, with all of this shit URL got going on right now, this is the move. To have him back off of two cards. And I like Jack. That's the only reason why I'm talking about it. He's coming off of a dope, authentic battle. I thought he did his thing. And he just had a battle with Chef Trez. We know, I know who won. Let's just do it like that. But he had a battle with Chef Trez, and he was trending this way. But to have him do that, like both cards, you just ruin both of the. Well, I ain't gonna say ruin, but that we go hard card. I know they don't got nobody bigger or better than than, than that on there. Come on, you gotta do better, man. If you're not gonna do it, just have your artists don't even do it. Why, why even have him battle? Why even book this shit? Why? Why was it good for the goose, but it's not good for the gander is all I want to know. It was great when he was booking him, but now it's not good no more. Oh, we got to have him come out, come out, come out. Come on, dog. And it's, all this is looking like his battles is getting blocked. I'm be honest with you. That's how it looks. It looks from the outside looking in. I don't know the reason why, but 48 hours is the same shit. I just watched Danny Myers do his interview with Three Letter Man. And I'm going to say this about Danny. Danny seems like a good guy who just gets taken advantage of a lot. And obviously, he's, he's way older, so he should know better than this by now. But I said I wasn't going to be that hard on Danny because it's like, this shit keeps happening, and he puts himself in the GOAT conversation, GOAT, GOAT, GOAT. And I just have, I was going to do a blog on it. I was like, Danny, you can never really be considered the GOAT. It's because the moves that you make. The moves that you make outside of the ring are fucking cynical. Like, you, you got a battle in Philly this weekend. You're going to show up to Philly? Do you think they're going to give you anything you're battling against top floor loot? Y'all might not know who top floor loot is, but... I be in Philly every fucking day. I know how they feel about him, and I know how they give it up for him. 
you're not going to get anything off. If you, if, if you show up, you're going to get smoked because they're not going to give you any reaction. They're not going to really fuck with you because of what you just did by backing out of the trenches car. Y'all niggas don't understand. When y'all back out of these cars, y'all turn whole leagues against y'all. Y'all turn whole supporters against y'all. Y'all turn whole cities against y'all when y'all do this shit. So you can do it all y'all want, but just be smart because um, that ain't really what's, what's, what's groovy. Accepting battles and then saying you're going to do them and then not doing them. Uh, we can keep on going, man. I told y'all I got a lot of different shit. So K Shine, salute to K Shine and everything that he's got going on. Uh, he's he went in on. He's basically going in. This this is URL. We, what are we doing? It's URL. Uh, he he. I saw his interview with salute to Harlem Legend Qua and everybody over there. I saw his interview and he was basically explaining what he had going on and saying, you know, he was depressed, like he was going through depression, he was feeling like he wasn't valued no more, his fans had to pick him up off the ground and, you know what I'm saying, and make sure that he was good until he was to continue to support him. Get it to ho, 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 That's not a slip, that's not a slip, it's just a little blip, it's not a slip, I got it, I got it, we still moving and grooving. He has fans had to help pick him up and get him back together and I'm like, what the fuck they got going on over there that the artists are this disgruntled? You got the easy situation, you got a K Sean situation, you got Holly, you got all these situations. And it's like, bro, like this shit looks crazy. So K Sean says, the new talent is just cheaper. That's what he tweeted, you know what I'm saying? Because that's why they don't want to book him or he's not getting booked or he's not in battle. Yeah, Sean costs 20000 You can book 20 of these niggas for 20000 So that's what's going on, Sean. I, I got to measure it out for you. K Sean for 20 and he needs an opponent that's probably going to cost that. Or you can take that same 40000 and book 80 of these niggas for the next six months. It, it, and from a business perspective, I'm not mad. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't mad. Jesus, 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 send the flood. Send the flood. It is over. Send the flood. We need to get this shit over with. So I see why they're booking the new talent. The niggas is cheaper. They can't ask for no 20 grand. So he said, the trap dead. Niggas just flipping new battlers now. They saying that. Niggas, the trap, niggas ain't hustling no more. They ain't selling drugs. They just flipping battlers and just putting them on the app and all this other shit. He goes on and says, they want to get rid of the proof that better work does exist. So they're forcing new artists on you because they work for opportunity and not money. With a controlled voting system, anyone can be a star. I was paying attention. Speak when you know what you're talking about. Otherwise, you just look stupid. It's true. They, the new talent don't work for money. They work for opportunity. And I know people be like, Vada, why do you throw your own experiences in? Because I've been around these niggas. I've seen it before. I know exactly how these niggas work. They do that. I told you I work, did not get paid and told I was working for an opportunity. And I said, I'm sorry, opportunity is not what do with me. I work for fee, not for free. I got kids to feed. FTK, the new gang, feed the kids. Shout out to all my new, I'm starting a new gang. FTK, that's what we represent, feed the motherfucking kids. That's what I'm here for. I ain't here for nothing else. Shout out, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm grabbing members. Who wanna come on? Come on, let's be the members. Where my members at? FTK, don't worry, merch is coming, everything else is coming, we got everything together, we got the, the computer systems in order, we got the, 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 everything's going down. FTK, man, feed the kids, man, that's all I'm here for, I ain't here for nothing else. Not your battle rap crews, not your battle rap beat, none of that shit. Feed the kids, nothing else. So, Sean says uh, that better work does exist, and then he posted a shot that, uh, he posted a clip of his battle, and it got taken down. Now, Sean my boy K Sean, you are not the only person who's had uh, a clip taken down or whatever the case may be. Shit, I got I got a joint where they just took down. I had a clip that I posted for Luke Castro the other day to support him, and my shit got taken down. So you can't really feel too emotional about that because if you post a clip, that shit's coming down. URL wants all their content to live on the app, and when you put everybody in one area, you can kind of control their value, control their worth. You know what I'm saying? Like you put everybody in one hole and tell them, nigga, you only worth a thousand dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa! You ain't got no content on, nigga. You wanna get back? Get back? Sit down, nigga. You gonna, that's all you worth, and that's the way it goes. That's the reason why they didn't want Easy the Black Captain to battle against Hitman Holler. He battles against Hitman Holler. He finds out he's worth thirty, forty, fifty thousand. He go back across the street and they be like, yo, we trying to book you on Super Fight for five. That's the reason. That is the main reason why. They want to keep everybody in trapped in the same thing. They want to keep you one spot. No, you can't go nowhere else. I don't give a shit. No, you're not going nowhere. You know? And that's why even in Smack's interview, he was real adamant about, you know, people following him and following them. And he was saying, you know, if it ain't on URL, it don't count. We obviously know that's not true. We obviously know that that's not true. If it's on if it ain't on URL, it don't count. No, there's a lot of leagues doing good work out here, doing good business. And they do a lot of views too. 
I recap battles from Rare Breed that got 250,000 views. Murder Moot versus uh, Averb. I recap big battles from Chrome 23. Bullpen. There's a lot of leagues out here doing good business. It's not that whole account on only one league shit. That's the closed mindset. I am here for all leagues. I've said this shit before. I've been the king of the dot event. I've been the Chrome 23. Uh, no, I haven't been to Chrome. I'm going to go to Chrome. I've been the king of the dots event. Rare Breed. URL, uh, lead, all a lot of bunch of small leagues too. I'm mean, here for all of battle rap. I ain't no one side closed mind nigga. That's just not gonna work for me. I can't, you know what I'm saying? Because even when you get pigeonholed into that one mindset in that one league, and they not really, if they ain't got it clicking for you, or they're not putting you in position, now you just out here looking crazy. So for me, I always keep my options open. Uh, Remy, salute to Remy and all that she's got going on. She's got a card going down this weekend, The Grudge. It's got 40 bars versus Yoshi on there, and it's got Shea Rag, it's got Tony Black. It's got a lot of dope battles on it. Yes, it's a female card. Yeah, there's not a lot of huge names on there. And I definitely, I had intentions on going to slide through there, but we got the show dropping today. We got a lot of stuff going on tomorrow, and it's Father's Day. So I did cop some tickets for some people. Uh, shout out to Remy. You know what I'm saying? I got some people that's going to be in the building that I did cop tickets for, you know what I'm saying, that I looked out for because, you know, I support everything that they got going on as an independent entity. And, uh, you know, my girl Nikki Knowledge, she got some, she got her predictions and who she think is going to win the battles. And I like to give opportunities and things like that to other people so they could come along and win too. Uh, 40 Bars versus Yoshi, I seen the promotion, I seen the, the pictures, I seen the trolling and everything that's going on. I'll probably go with 42-1 if she got all her material and it's all together. Uh, you know, 40 Bars is a legend. She's been doing this shit for a while and I can't take no cut off of her product. But uh, other than that, man, it's just so... So much going on in battle rap, man. Shout out to my brother Showtime SP. And, uh, you know, it's up. We'll talk soon. Gang, gang. Okay, y'all. So I am back now with another video. I know I've been gone for a minute, but I'm back now. Um, speaking of Remy, Remy has an event coming up, and that is on June 17th, 2023. That is a Saturday. And if you have not gotten your tickets, make sure you do so because this is the grudge card. And the grudge card is going to be a night to remember. So I'm going to give my predictions. First, I'm going to run down who's on the card, and then I'm going to let y'all know who I think is going to win and why. So we have Shea Rack versus Tony Blanco, Tori Doe versus Shayna Ashley, Caution versus First Lady Flames, and 40 Bars versus Yoshi G, or Yoshi G versus 40 Bars, however you want to slice it. Um, okay, so let me begin. Shea Rack versus Tony Blanco. I'm going to have to go with Shea Rack on this one. I like Shea Rack's pen just a little bit better. She's a little just more polished for me. Not to say that Tony Blanco isn't, but I enjoy Shea Rack's material just a smidgen more. Um, so I'm going to go with Shea Rack 2-1. I think Tony is going to do her best. I think she's going to fight back. I don't think she's going to just lay there and get walked on. So I'm going to have to go with Shea Rack 2-1. Now, Tori Doe versus Shayna Ashley. Now, both Tori and Shayna are vets. They're stamped in the game as vets. Um, both women are amazing at what they do. You know, Tori Doe gave us the remote line. Um, and the last time we saw Tori, she was pretty good, but I needed just a little bit more the last time I saw her. Shayna, on the other hand, she always shows up. She always got bars. You know, she always walk on people. She always talk her talk. She's always poised. She always give you, you know, what you need to to enjoy her material, to enjoy the battle. And I might just be a little biased because she's from the Bronx and I'm from the Bronx. She's from Uptown. I'm from Uptown. Um, so I'm definitely going to have to go with Shayna 3-0. Now, let me just say this. Tori Doe is going to come with material because she's trying to, in a sense, redeem herself from her last battle. And she wants to keep her vet status. She wants to keep that Tori Doe um, um, feel that we fell in love with her for um, during her Queen of the Ring days. So I'm not going to say that Tori Doe is just going to lay there and die either. But Shayna is Shayna Ashley. So I'm going to have to say Shayna Ashley 3-0. The next battle is Caution versus First Lady Flames. Now, Caution was looking real good in that tournament. She obviously won versus all her opponents, um, minus the last one. Um, but Caution is pretty good. I enjoy her material as well. Um, and First Lady Flames is First Lady Flames. I mean, she always show up and she always show out. She stood against heavy hitters like E. Hard and JC. She beat Jack Boy. So First Lady Flames does not disappoint. I'm definitely going to have to go 
with First Lady Flames on this one. I'm going to give her a 2-1, um, a if not a Ladies 3 Oh, I do think Caution's going to show up, but I'm going to 100% lean over to First Lady Flames. Now, last, but of course not least, the battle of the night, the um, main event is first uh, 40 bars versus Yoshi G or Yoshi G versus 40 bars. Now, this is indeed a grudge match. If you remember, they had some issues on Twitter. They was going back and forth. They had a couple words for each other. So this is a wonderful battle to have on this car so shout out to Remy for that I'm going to have to just call this an immediate classic I'm not going to choose 40 or Yoshi both women come to rap both women have sharp pens both women are extremely articulate and can put words together well they both scheme very beautifully so I am I'm just going to say this is a classic this is definitely an instant classic and I just can't wait to be in the building for that Shout out to Remy for um, this card. Shout out to the, the 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 trailer. It's very well done, very well put together, very well produced. Um, and she's doing some wonderful things for the ladies in the culture. So shout out to Remy and all the ladies who are on this card. And I just can't wait to be in the building. So again, that is June 17th, 2023. Make sure you get your tickets. Chrome 23. Hey, straight up out of Atlanta, we make careers out of truck yeah, shit. Like a piss and mashes, we focus on making packs. Yeah. Look, miss me with that cap yeah. shit, we dope pedal. Hey, I swear trapping was a sport, I win a gold medal. Third place, bitch, I feel like you saying. Yeah. Black and yellow Glock 9 on me, I call it Wu Tang. Ooh. Old dirty bastard, yeah. dumping dick.